Alright, so with our exit spell, we can get out of here after we do a bit of looting. There is one item in particular, one weapon in particular, that I want to make sure we pick up. The Vorpal is a pretty meh weapon, which the knight or the thief can use. But, uh, and I suppose the red wizard as well, but yeah, compared to the defense that we already have, it's not nearly as good. On the next floor, though, there is something that uh, will be an upgrade for us. I should mention the... Mirage Tower, not an awful place to do some grinding if you want to, and plus you can just, you know, step right outside, use a cabin, a house, whatever you want to use. But, uh, I, I think, honestly, I, I'm gonna do a bit more grinding before all is said and done, and I think I'm gonna head back to the ice cave and tangle with some of those eyes. Just quick, you know, step on the spot, step back off, do it again and again and again show you just to be sure. Then of course we have the most infamous enemy in this game, which we actually have a rare Blaze Bestiary entry. He's gonna talk about, uh, I won't even say the name yet, but if you are familiar with this game, you probably know who I'm talking about. But here on this second floor, Not the worst, but it's annoying having four Cerebuses scorching you over and over and over again. We have some of the best armor in the game on this floor. Arguably the best armor in the game, in the dragon armor. So we'll want to pop that on our fighter. And while we go around to do some looting, let's go to Fluff for one last Fluff fact. I mentioned earlier that Dragon Quest actually helped Final Fantasy get greenlit in the first place. The developers of Final Fantasy put a little easter egg reference to Dragon Quest in Final Fantasy, at least in the English version. Check the grave in the northeastern section of Elfheim, and it will read, Here lies Erdrick 837-866. This is a reference to a character in the Dragon Quest series. In the original Famicom version of Final Fantasy, the tombstone reads, Here lies Link, something which later remastered versions of the game kept in place. The people of Elfheim actually bear a slight resemblance to Link, wearing green tunics and hats. Ironically and coincidentally, the Famicom version of Zelda II, The Adventures of Link, includes a reference to Erdrick on a tombstone in Saria Town, but this was omitted from the English version. It's all a bit confusing, but there you go. Yeah, there's that connection we talked about earlier. We saw it much earlier in the game there. With the uh, Dragon Warrior connection, the homage there. We got the Thor hammer that could be used by the the uh, the knight, the ninja, or the white wizard. Best uh, weapon, actually, for the white wizard. But I've got my eyes on... There it is, the sun sword. Very de uh, decent piece of hardware right there. And the dragon armor, best armor in the game. But the sun sword is going to be an upgrade over our defense sword at this stage in the game. At least in terms of attack power. It's sort of uh, up to you as to what you want to equip at this point. The sun sword is a 32 and 30. That's damage and hit percentage. As compared to the uh, defense swords 30 and 35. So we're... Uh, taking a bit more damage when we have the Sun Sword, which I'll probably go for ultimately, but dropping our hit percentage just a little bit, so sort of whatever you want to prioritize there. But if we go a bit deeper into the Mirage Tower, it actually requires us to go to the next area here, the, into the Floating Castle. Definitely make sure you have the exit spell before you try that, so you can get out of here more easily if you uh, run into a tough battle and just make it out alive. 
That's why it's nice to have the warp spell for your black mage. Not quite as effective as escape, but you know, get out floor by floor in case your white wizard goes down. And you're kind of stuck, so. We're gonna head out back this way. This will lead us to the staircase. To the final floor here in Mirage Tower. Relatively small place. Especially compared to the uh, floating tower, which is next. Another fun enemy named Catman. Alright, Catman. Guess they have the body of a person. They also kind of look like they have the body of a cat. Maybe a large cat, like a lion or something, but still. Another mandatory battle right here, the Blue Dragon. I don't know if we want to call him a boss or not, but uh, he uh, doesn't really have any weaknesses, just beat up on him, essentially. Pays out a fair amount of experience. He has under 500 HP, so yeah, he shouldn't take too many hits there. Yeah, 818. Guess not the best. Alright, so we have the cube that we picked up earlier. So now we can access the floating castle at this point, where there is a ton of stuff to get. At this stage in the game, most of it is not that big of a deal. We can skip picking up decent amount of the loot. So right here we have chests to the left, to the right. The Bane Sword is down south, but that would be a, a step down from what we're already working with. It's even worse than the uh, Defense Sword, I believe, so... A 22 and 20, so not worth our time. Just gonna head straight up. There's a pro ring to the right in that initial area if you want to grab that. Good item. You can also buy those in, uh, forget which town it was offhand. I think it was Gaia, but, uh, it's pretty decent. The opal armlet there. Bracelet. Whatever that piece is called. Gauntlet, I guess. I got there eventually. Over here we'll find the third ribbon. Also an opal shield to go with our opal gauntlet. all that stuff, and we're pretty much ready to do some grinding with the, uh, the eye at this point. But I want to go a bit further just so we can get the, uh, the sword that I'm looking for in here. Or maybe not the sword I'm looking for, but I'm sorry, the, the piece that we need to take back to the dwarves. Remember that? Very long time ago, that guy told us to find the adamant. That's what we can find on this floor, happily. I'm gonna stop in down here at the gap first, though. <laughs> Get a, 
a white and a black t-shirt for our white and black wizards, respectively. Just a t-shirt. Or a shirt. Um, but, uh, still, pretty much the best defense that, uh, the white and black wizards can have at this stage in the game, so definitely pop those on your respective wizards. No red shirt, unfortunately. I guess that's how, uh, Square figures they're evening things out, finally. When you have this, uh, red wizard who can cast some pretty decent spells. Hey, there's an eye right there. Not ready to fight you yet, eye. Can we run from the eye? Might not be able to. And there goes Blaze. That's why you want the ribbons on. It's actually good. It's a good lesson. I'm gonna rely heavily on the professor's ability to smack that eye around and down he goes. So every time that, you know, your fighter gets the first hit, then you have yourself an automatic 800 so experience per character. Again, we got to split it three ways, so we got a bit more there, but... It's close to 800, and it's a really quick battle if you uh, are properly equipped with the ribbons and uh, just have your fighter do his thing. Especially after we get this uh, penultimate, the best, second best sword in the game made for ourselves. Which is the last order of business that we have here. There's some cash in the, uh, there's another eye, there's some cash in the, uh, the building to the left. And uh, just nothing else of really worth mentioning, on this floor at least. And here it is, finally, the Adamant. Very close to the end of the game. And actually, the best sword in the game is in the next and final dungeon, so it's, if you do this, dungeon and then go straight into the final part of the game. There's not really a lot of cause for you to stop off and get the, uh, the sword made by the dwarves, because you can just, you know, get the best sword in the game, which you just find. The catch is, it's very close to the end of the game, so you don't really get a chance to enjoy it all that much. A lot of stuff on this floor, but uh, not a whole lot that's really worth picking up. There's a katana, which is the only weapon which can be exclusively equipped by the ninja. It's sort of their best weapon. If you're not giving them the Masamune, of course, which is the best sword in the game, best weapon in the game, can be equipped by anybody, but definitely want to give it to your best fighter, in, that, in which case, that's our fighter. Or our knight, excuse me. But uh, other than that, not a whole lot worth mentioning on that last screen. We just went for the, uh, on that last floor, we just went for the, the fastest route here. As we head right to, and then down to, to get to the next floor. It's a big maze right there. But uh, yeah, that's all you have to do. It's also the pro cape on that last floor. It's the, probably the only other thing worth mentioning, but uh, it's a it's a shield that most everyone can use, except for the master. But uh, so now we are famously on Warmax Bridge. It is so called that because you have a very small chance, although not that small. I see uh, a lot of quote unquote guides saying that you have like a one in two hundred chance. 256 chance of running in to Warmack, far and away the most difficult enemy in the game. But, uh, yeah, we got lucky, didn't run into him. He's actually a lot harder than most of the bosses in this game, but, uh, if you go hunting for him, then it's certainly worth your time if you can take him down, but 
you kind of need to do some grinding just to get in a state where you can actually have have a chance in taking him down. We'll show it to you, but uh, first things first, we have the final fiend, I believe. So we're going to throw it back to Gary to get some tips on this one. Gary? Boss beaters. All right, Tiamat. 1,000 HP. We recommend that you are level 25 before taking on this boss. They have a weakness which can work in some instances to break and bane. If you want to use those spells to give it a try, you might take them down very quickly. They use melee attacks, thunder, poison, blizzard, blaze, pretty much every spell they have access to, all the different elements. But uh, aside from those spells you can cast, a lit works good because they tend to use that early on. Uh, cast fast on your best attackers and just start smacking them, you'll take them down. Right, thank you very much, Gary. Hopefully we're close here. One thousand HP. I think Warmack has two thousand actually. <laughs> We're in pretty good shape though, considering this is the final fiend here. Hasn't killed anyone. Got the speed on Blaze, got him maxed at health. This might do it. 309, 11 hits, that might be a record so far. Pathetic, 7 hits for 58 damage. Let's check out that healing staff. You can access, you can see by going down beneath, or going into the items and going up. Good thing we did the A lit. Mitigate some of the damage we took right there. So let's see how much do we get there. We got 32, 20 something, 16, and 19, so it's all over the place. Like 15 to 30. It's all a dice roll, and down goes Tiamat. Tiamat. Decent experience. It's a drop in the bucket compared to what we get from Warmack, but... Alright, we're gonna head back to our airship now. And just do some last minute uh, errands here. And then do a bit of grinding. To get ready for the, the final stretch, the return the Temple of Fiends. First things first though, let's put that Animat to work. Go back to the Dwarf Cave. Which uh, from here, I'm trying to think. I guess it's southwest, but I'm all kind of turned around now. West from here, west from the lakes. Might be some stuff at Crescent Lake that I uh, want to pick up. So let's stop in here right quick. We should have the money by now to buy pretty much anything that we want. Especially if the, it's lower level spells at this point. Let's see. Make sure we get exit. Still don't have that yet, so. That's an important one. You absolutely need to have that before you enter the... Uh, the Temple of Fiends. Once you head in, at a certain point, you uh, you you, pass, you cross the Rubicon. There, it's the point of no return. With the exception, there's an asterisk there. If you have the exit spell, you can somehow, which is ridiculous when you think about what we actually do when we go into that temple, as you'll see when we get there. But uh, still, good to have that spell. Again, like the best armor in the game, he's given us two bucks for it. This is a genuine black shirt, sir. Come on now. Some folks have no taste. No vision. 
Where would Mr. Gap or Mr. Navy be without vision? As we head west now, to the Dwarf Cave, a little north. Here's the castle. It should be kind of south. Alright, there's the Marsh Cave. It should just be north from there. Am I losing my mind? Where is this cave? There we go. Got turned around. It happens. Now anyway, let's go to their blacksmith. They were even blacksmiths, man. Don't want to profile, but they make one heck of a sword. And it's free, how about that? Let's pop that baby on. Excalibur. The mythical sword. It's not even the best sword in the game, but... <laughs> they make you work for it. Pretty decent damage. Pair that with 111 in the hit percentage. Specifically, it's a 45 damage and 35%. Only the Moss Immune average is better at a 56 and 50, so. Big upgrade even over the Excalibur. Take that, King Arthur. Now I just want to stock up on healing potions, max out on those, sell off the stuff we don't need, and uh, pretty much all these swords at this point, anything that's not Excalibur. And uh, I don't know, I have a soft spot for that uh, healing staff. So once we're maxed out on healing potions, I'm actually going to go ahead and head into the Temple of Fiends. Because I have that exit spell. We can at least pop in and check it out for a little bit. Put up a house right outside. Save our progress. So we're heading back 2,000 years. Which... I can understand why we wouldn't be able to get out of here. You know, we can't go back. You've gone back in the past 2,000 years. You have to take care of your business before you can uh, come back. Or you can cast the exit spell, which somehow uh, enables time travel as easily as whatever we did to get back here. But uh, that's fine. Chalk it up with the many other things I've questioned but didn't understand in this game. But uh, once again, not a bad place to do some grinding in here if you want. Not as safe, not as cozy as just throwing down with the eye time and time and time again. Which, incidentally, I think I'm ready to do. See how much we get from uh, four frost dragons. 500 damage. Well done, Blaze. That's all you can really say to that. So, 1,700 experience, pretty good, but a little too dangerous for my blood. So instead, let's jump ahead 2,000 years with the exit spell, and we're back in the ice cave. And if you want to pop on those ribbons at this point, then that's your uh, prerogative. But yes, I've jumped ahead to level 30 with all of my characters. I think that's a good level to shoot for to finish the game. That's what I recommend, and it's very manageable by going down time and time again with the eye right here. Just rinse and repeat, and you're good. And now, we promised it, we teased it earlier, let's go to Blaze. 
All right, I'm dusting off the bestiary portion of my guide to cover a special one in Warmack. Not quite a boss, but darn if he isn't as powerful, if not more powerful, than probably 99% of the bosses in this game. 1000 HP, we recommend you have level 30 for all your characters before you even think about trying to find him. Admittedly, if you're walking his bridge, you might not have control over that if you run into him on the first visit. He's got no weaknesses. He uses incredibly powerful melee attacks and nuke, which will hit everyone in your party for big and potentially life-ending damage. Hundreds per character. The strategy, immediately cast a fire to nullify, to some extent, the effects of the nuke so you can at least survive it. And then cast nuke yourself with your black wizard at this point. And then once you've done that, you can also think about casting fast on your most powerful fighters. Your, your master, uh, wh whoever you got in your party. Just the most powerful fighters. Boost them up with the speed so they get more hits in. And Viz 2 can sometimes help you out a little bit. Can keep someone alive. Otherwise, just attack with your strongest party members. Eventually, you'll take him down and enjoy the insane amount of spoils you get, experience and money-wise, from this very special enemy. Thank you very much, boys. Yeah, I misspoke. 1,000 HP, but still. If he gets that nuke off and you do not have any protection, if you're under-leveled, he will rock you. But anyway, excellent work. Blaze, Fluff, Gary still has a bit more work to do, but we are heading into the, the final stretch here. I think we're good to go. Just kind of sitting on all those ribbons right now, giving Blaze all the, uh, all the stuff nobody else is wearing at this point. And it's time to head back 2,000 years. Make sure you obviously have... <laughs> That's cute. We don't have time. Make sure you've got the maximum 99 healing potions before you jump back into the, the past. Actually, I don't really have the patience for this right now. We're just trying to get to the end at this point with one notable stop off. Once again, this is a bit of a maze. Different ways to go. To follow along. There's a kind of mini boss rush here where we have to face all of the the fiends, the four fiends, one last time for the true final boss. We'll bring Gary back in to sign off with that one. One of the toughest bosses on the NES, to be sure. We'll see what his strategy entails. And we have our, well, we have a phantom. This shouldn't be too bad. One target, blazes fists. You do the math. Couple chests on either side, just packed with gold. Which at this point we don't really care. Use the loot to open this up. I like that uh, the seal disappears as you go into your inventory. So like, oh, okay, so that moves. We can, we can go in here. Zombie dragons haven't had as much luck running from. It's like some special combination of it's it's magical enough and it's a dragon. I'm not really sure how that works, but
case you were curious, level 50 is the highest level you can get to in this version of the game. There have been, been remakes where things are different. The level cap being one, but uh, in the NES version, 50 is as high as you can go, but that's an overkill. You want to at least have a semi-decent challenge here at the final boss, and we will we'll certainly have that and then some, so... But if you did want to just keep grinding, trying to find Warmech, and by the way, walking around trying to find Warmech, I think took maybe five battles, so hardly, you know, one in 256 or whatever the uh, supposed odds are for running into Warmech. I never really had that much trouble finding him, for better or worse. It was good to get that one battle on camera, though. One of the most infamous non-bosses, hardest regular enemies in video game history. Dicey battle there. Haven't had to buy too many softs in this game. Got by on our relatively uh, light supply. Can't run from the earth. Sounds like I'm trying to say something profound, but just literally, yeah, these these enemies just to remind you we, we can't get away from them. The locations for the, the revisited fiends start to become a bit less obvious. We have one right here. This is revisiting Lich. Arm works pretty well, but I like to save the more powerful stuff. I don't think we'll have too much trouble. Oh, you got Nuke. Alright. There you go. I see someone's been studying. Someone took a trip to Leafen. Guess uh, Lich has the slab as well. Can talk to the shopkeeps there and everything. Anyway, no, no worse for wear. That's why we brought an entire uh, drugstore's worth of healing potions. grindy part here in the end is just healing ourselves over and over and over again with these very weak healing potions. Like, we would pay extra for more concentrated, you know, uh, the Red Bull of, not sponsored by the way, but the that equivalent. Something with a bit more pep to it. kind of see the enemies in the area reflect 
the upcoming boss, kind of give you a little tip of uh, who we might have coming up here. And this is, like, if you, if there was ever a time when you just wanted maybe a little bit of TNT or, I don't know, a chainsaw to, or a wrecking ball, just some way to make a little shortcut as we were going way out of our way to uh, get to the next boss here, but this is the way to go. Some of the doors blend in too, so it's not always obvious as to uh, where we're meant to go here. A couple defensive items if we go down. Um, and there's the, uh, the katana, which I mentioned earlier, the ninja's best weapon. If we go down there, we can grab that, but uh, since we have no ninja in the party, we're just gonna heal up as best we can and take on Carrie. Who still isn't weak against fiery type, or icy type spells, I should say. But it's better than nothing. So we'll try our ice three. Maybe uh, drop some A fire on the group. Carrie might not even get a second turn. Yep. Not too bad. Judging by the blue water type enemies, I think we're back in the Kraken territory. Another instance where it's not completely obvious where the doors are, where you need to go, and another instance where you would kill for just some way to squeeze through those columns right there. Give yourself a little shortcut, but alas, not sure how those sharks are existing. Not really any water anywhere around here, but that's fine. Just cut down here, travel around, and we'll have the next fiend right before the stairs. Come on, guys, I'm not trying to fight you. We know how this is going to end. We're going to turn our backs on you. And you're just going to think, oh, okay. Crack and revisited. Fire some lit. Good punch. Love it if we just put him away with. Eh, didn't get the A lit off in time. It's like they missed out on having that one last elemental that we could use to you know, match up against the four different elemental fiends. It's like, okay, sure, lightning against the water fiend, but why is the water fiend using lightning? Like, there should be a... There should be water attacks, I suppose. Don't mind me, just nitpicking a fabulous game that came out over 30 years ago at this point. There's a lot of value in that. A lot of sense. That should do it. A 402. Raise the roof indeed, but one gold and a piddly 500 experience points at this stage of the game. Alright, this is the floor where we can get the greatest weapon in the game and it's delayed because we have to fight these stupid cyclones.
It's frustrating at this point. Fighting all these dudes, but just come down this way. Ah, oh, jeez. At least we have the chance to strike first. The end of this little diagonal hallway. We will finally have in our possession the greatest weapon in this game. The Mas Immune. Which we will promptly put right into the hands of gear. <laughs> I'm just kidding into the fighter professor's hands for that bonus 50% hit chance and we're gonna need it on the final boss who's upcoming still have team at here on this floor but uh, this is the penultimate floor right here not much left killing me air guarding it too, that's the craziest thing. Greatest weapon in the game. Let's equip it and take a peek. So we go from 70 and 135 to 81 and 150. Nothing wrong with that. Very happy with that. So, just basic math, you know, you're doing four hits, you're doing over 300 damage. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's just good. I think that's the, the main takeaway. Don't have to do all the math, but... Now let's rush, rush, rush back to Tiamat. It's a strangely laid out 
temple, I have to say. Whenever I see a pairing like this, I just think to myself, would a whiz vampire, a wizard vampire, and a zombie drag, would they hang out? Are they going out for drinks after this battle, assuming they win, or before the battle? They probably were if they thought they could beat us. Probably had more than a few drinks. So we have our final rematch with the final fiend here, Tiamat. And once again, we should have just enough healing potions to get everyone right again before the final boss. Might as well use those rather than... Come on, guys. No time. Definitely use the potions, though, now, because they're of no use to us in battle. Final boss in the game, yeah, I don't think getting back 30 HP is going to make that big of a difference. When the boss is probably averaging two or 300 with every hit, so... Anybody uh, need a couple HP here or there? That's pretty much all, all we're good for in this fight. I don't think we need it. I think the Professor and Blaze will put him down handily as we get to see that Masamune in action there. It's a thin but effective blade. Love the curve on that. Boost the Professor and Blaze just for the extra HP that we're going to take away from Tiamat here. Not sure if this is necessary, but we're not going to use it later. I mean, we could use it. Final Boss has a whole host of different spells, as Gary's going to explain to us. 11 hits right there. 8 hits for 550. That is why we took a couple extra minutes, fought those annoying water cyclones again and again and again, and got ourselves the greatest weapon in the game, in the Masamune. It's finally that time, though, unless there's another random encounter. Let's make sure we are all maxed out. They may have turned off random encounters in this final room, but... We have just enough with the healing potions? How about that? How's that for budgeting? Pretty fantastic. Hey, Garland. We hit you so hard, you went back 2,000 years. All right, for the final time in this Final Fantasy walkthrough, Gary, take us home. Boss beaters. All right, Chaos, the final boss in Final Fantasy. You're gonna need some luck with this particular boss. We recommend you're level 32. They have 2,000 HP and no weaknesses, and they know every spell ever, and yes, they will use them. Your strategy, you need to have some luck because you don't want them to use, uh, say, something that's going to kill your entire party with one hit. So, assuming they don't do that, you can go ahead and cast fast on your best attackers, nuke on chaos, because that's always a good idea, a wall for uh, your most important uh, fighters at this point to protect them from some of that magic damage, and viz to protect them from some of the uh, physical damage, and just attack. He generally cures on his fourth turn to basically top his health off, so if you can take him down before then, that would be great, but uh, if you don't, don't despair. Just know that that's coming, and just keep with the strategy. Eventually, you'll take him down, and phew, congratulations. You have beaten Final Fantasy 1. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Great work today, Gary. We are not out of the woods yet, though. We're looking a little worse for wear. Trying to get all of the protections we can possibly get. And there, there he goes. Good work, team. Now, credit to the TAs today for keeping everyone alive. Well, at least someone alive at all times during this playthrough. As we never had to continue. And yeah, Chaos takes his time exiting stage right here. No one died during this battle. It really, it, like, 
Like Gary said, there's so much luck that goes into it. It's a crap shoot a lot of times, depending on what they cast, but the time loop is now broken. The 2,000 year long battle is over and peace prevails. Love to see it. Control the four elements, the earth, the wind, the fire, and the water. Again, belongs to the earth. The earth belongs to the earth. Okay. Makes sense, I guess. Garland's hatred burned for 2,000 years. That hatred led to four powers. Led the four powers to this world. Chaos was created from those four. I like when they explain what just happened at the end of the game. It's like, did everybody get that? All on the same page here? Kind of like when I explain what just happened in a movie to my mom in real time. Oh, so he's the bat. Okay. Evil dominated the world, but... The warriors of light, the light warriors, have set the wrongs right. Charles in charge style. They travel in time, the world returns to normal. I mean, Gary probably just cast the exit spell and we were, we were golden. Sarah and Jane wait for them. Of course, Garland does too. Remember Sarah and Jane, don't you? Super fans of the Light Warriors? When did it ever happen? That's a good question. Everything went mad in a day. The reason lies in the 2000 year time loop. How crazy is that? The four chose to become one force and fight against the four evil forces that set darkness upon the world. Like they don't need to explain this much, but it's padding out the ending length. I can appreciate that. The legend will live on, passed down by the dwarves, the elves, and the dragons. All races we've come in contact with, and interacted with, passed on by people unsure where the story came from. Isn't that how it goes? It's telephone, but with much greater stakes. Light warriors return from their journey back in time 2,000 years. And hopefully everyone's ready to buy us a drink. The memories stored deep in their hearts will protect the world. That's vague enough to make sense. Never forget the good and true. And there it is. Never turn the four powers to the dark side. All right, lending a little bit from uh, George Lucas there. That's all right. The truth will always live on in the hearts of the people. Again, vague enough to be okay. We can we can roll with that. That's fine. That warrior was you. And that student was you. Thank you so much for attending this class. Once again, may the orbs always shine. May you always click that like button. It really does help us out. Cheap, I know, but may be effective. Please consider subscribing to this class if you have not already done so. Subscribing to this channel to enroll in this class. We do one of these classes every single week. We'd love to have you enrolled one last time. Big thanks to all my TAs. This was the game which started one heck of a franchise. One of the greatest video game franchises of all time for my money. But, uh, yes. That's all there is to this one. Thank you so much. Leave a comment. What are your memories of this game? Hopefully, uh, maybe we learned you a thing or two about it, or you just had a good time watching. Either way, we appreciate it. And, uh, that's our time for this week. We'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now. Ready?